Hello everyone, welcome to another video by the AI Loop. Today we are going to be looking at Beam Search. So let's start. Before starting with Beam Search, I'd like to give a quick overview of how the language modeling head works. Basically, how we get from vectors to the words, so that that's where we can derive the Beam Search from. So let's say this is a decoder. I'll be going horizontally here. So if that's confusing to you, I'm just letting you know. So let's say the decoder outputs a vector of size and, and we don't care about this size. So what we usually do in order to get to the words is project this into a bigger vector. But this time this vector is of the vocabulary dimensions. So let's say if our vocabulary consists of 35,000 words, this vector would be a size 35,000. And then what we do is run this through a softmax function and basically we end up with another vector of the same size but this time instead of the numbers there are probabilities in there the probability of that particular word like the word at that particular position belonging to the one that is predicted by the decoder and all the probabilities add up to one because that's the property for the probability distribution so the base algorithm that's uh, the greedy search so what we do in greedy search is just like when we have an output vector like this we just pick the position with the highest let's say this is the one with the highest probability so we just pick this word so like let's say this is of position three and so we go to our embedding table and like get the third vector whatever it is uh, so we basically get this the third word I mean so whatever is the one with highest probability we get that this is the case in query search so now let's see how it works in case of beam search so beam search is an effective uh, algorithm at decoding it generates more sensible words when we compare it to the greedy search but it also comes with a cost that the computation increases and you'll see why. So let me just start with the final step. So let's say like we have the decoder and then it predicted the outputs. Now these are the outputs, like let's say we run this through the softmax and then like this is of size 35,000 and we have the probability of uh, every position belonging to the word that is predicted by the decoder. So what happens in beam search is that in the start, you're asked to pick a hyperparameter that's the number of beams. So I'll just write it as NB. So let's say in this case, I pick the number of beams is two. So what happens is that unlike greedy search where we pick the only most probable word, what we do is that we pick the top two most probable words for that position. So when I get this distribution of the vector, so what I do is instead of picking only this position that's the most probable, let's say there's, uh, this is the highest probability that comes after this, I pick this position to be a potential candidate for my prediction too. So now instead of one, we have two words that could be the potential candidates for our predicted word. Let's denote them as word one and word two. And then what happens is that we send this word one into the decoder. Basically we come back here and then the steps repeat. So we have the output vector by the decoder and then that gets projected into the vocabulary size and we run a softmax through it. And then we get the uh, vector with probabilities again. So here you would end up with probabilities again, like a vector with probabilities again. But this time, what you would do is create two copies of the transformer, ideally for the intuition, uh, we could think of it like that. So we would create two copies of the transformer, pass word one as the input for the first one and word two as the input for the second transformer and get these outputs again from the decoder. So now since our hyperparameter is set to two, what we do is that for this word one and word two, we already have, let's take the probabilities as x and y. We already have a numeric value, a probability that is assigned to word one and probability that is assigned to word two. Now what we want to do is take this particular word, 
take the probability of this particular word and multiply it with every other probability that's going to occur in this vector so that will be a 35,000 vector so we'll have 35,000 operations going on there and we'll do the same thing for this too we'll have 35,000 operations going on here so take the value of this uh, y that's a probability numeric and multiply it with the probability of every uh, space in this vector so now we will end up with something like this so we'll end up with like uh, two vectors two vectors as in like we'll end up with 35,000 plus 35,000 that's about uh, 70,000 values and out of these 70,000 values what we do is since the hyperparameter is set to 2 we take the two highest uh, joint probabilities so when I multiply it with uh, w1 let's say w1 is 0 0.1 and like let's say some other number here they give the highest probability so I would pick a combination of that and then let's say w2 and some other word here they give the highest probability so I would pick this one out sorry for the messy drawing but yeah so I would pick that one out and this one out so now I will end up with w1 and let's say this is w5 okay and w2 and let's say w6 i'm just assuming this to be a fifth position and this to be a sixth position in the index so this is what we would end up with with like two uh, with like two sentences each sentence consists of two words so this way we keep repeating the steps now what happens is that we have we know that we have two copies of the transformer so we would be passing the first sentence into the first copy and the second sentence into the second copy and we would end up with 35,000 probabilities again and then we would multiply, I mean we wouldn't multiply this over and over again but we would cache the uh, product of these two and then we would take that product and multiply it with every other uh, numeric in this vector and then similarly do the same thing for this and then I can choose the top uh, two since the beam size is set to two. So this way, uh, there could be chances that like at a point we get the two highest probability vectors from like this part alone. So that at that time, what we what happens is our, our algorithm eliminates this sentence to be a potential uh, prediction by the transformer, and then we continue on from there. So. The intuition behind beam search performing better than the greedy search is that when you have greedy search, you just take the topmost probable word, which does not guarantee you to give a complete sentence. But when you're doing beam search, basically you're considering a n set of potential candidates that n is decided by the number of beams. So if you observe that if you set the num beams to one, like the number of beams to one, it basically becomes a greedy search because you're only picking the topmost probable word. So that is the intuition behind using beam search. It's highly effective and generates more like better sentences when compared to the greedy search, but also comes with the cost of computation. Uh, yeah, so that's it regarding beam search. I hope you guys liked it. Uh, please subscribe to the AI loop. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.